All right, time to talk a little marketing and promotion. Today's objectives are to describe the range of marketing strategies applied to pharmacy products and services. We want to explain the importance of understanding the patient needs and motivations when designing marketing approaches. Also, we'll uh, go over the four P's of marketing and we'll explain the value of branding. So let's go to the definition of marketing from the American Marketing Association Board of Directors. Marketing is the activity set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. Marketing can be informational and competitive. Informational is meant to let consumers know about a product or service and that's available to explain why they might want it. If you're already interested in a product, informational marketing may catch your eye. However, competitive uh, typically refers to branding or developing the product's image. Um, any of you guys interested in the iPhone, for example, if you've seen, you know, this ad, and this was um, back when um, back when the iPhone 6 had first come out, it like uh, there were all these like um, sort of viral marketing campaigns or like you know links coming out, like oh, a sneak peek of the new iPhone 6 coming out, um, you know there wasn't a whole lot about it just kind of information about what it might look like what's what we're getting ready to see and, and you'll see Apple when they come out with a new product kind of sneak stuff out there um, and and it's just straight up you know really informational it's not really talking about any other product that's not an Apple product it's just their own stuff and that informational marketing sort of grabs your interest now uh, using the same company as, as an example, does anyone remember the uh, I'm a Mac and I'm a PC commercial? Um, so Mac used, uh, or Apple I guess, used uh, two actors to tr sort of develop um, this image that PC users using John, John Hodgman uh, was kind of dorky whereas uh, the Mac user was kind of young hip and cool or whatever so this would be an example of like a competitive marketing ad where you're sort of um, building your brand and putting yourself up against another product so let's communicate value to current and potential customers so what are we talking about and and value is usually referred to as you know, we, we we think of like in a monetary term like like financial now, if I hire you to sell water, something that's relatively, um, that's in the United States is going to be readily available and inexpensive, um, and I, but I want to hire you to sell this water at $2 a bottle, how are you going to convince customers that they're getting a good deal? So we come up with our overall plan that's going to identify target market segments. We want to figure out like a mix of products, like what types of water are we going to sell? We're going to sell just plain old tap water uh, in a bottle. Like what's how are we going to uh, separate our, our our product? And this is where I like to demonstrate needs, wants, and demands. So a need is essentially a basic requirement for health, safety, and well-being. So in this case, it's our water. A want is not necessarily required for survival, but it's going to make you happier if you have it. So having water is needed, but having it in a bottle is maybe a convenience, but we don't necessarily have to have it. Now a demand is a want that you're able and willing to pay for. So we have these needs and wants, and, and, and typically we're focusing on wants. Uh, we want to transform a want into something that people are really willing to go into their pocketbook and actually uh, pull out money in, in exchange for that want. Okay, so we've got water that we need to survive. Maybe we want it in a bottle. And here's the example of our demand. At what price point are you willing to, um, to pay for that bottled water? And, you know, I guess we see in general, if you look across the, the bottled water um, market, um, you know, it ranges from under a dollar to three, four, five dollars a bottle for bottled water. Uh, you know, it may also change based on the location. We'll get into the different P's of marketing. But, um, you know, think about your demand uh, for water just at your house. Okay, so you have your regular tap water. So maybe at home you don't need to have bottled water. 
But what about when you check through, you go through airport security and you can't, you can't take a bottle of water with you. So you get through the other side and you got an hour to your flight and you get thirsty. Well, there may be some water fountains around, or it may just be easier for you to go grab a, a bottle of water uh, and then go sit at your gate. Well, when you go pay for that bottle of water, are you going to be willing um, and able to pay uh, $4 for that bottle? So you can kind of see this across um, across markets and, and, and based on uh, you know the things that you may want, you know, when, when are you actually going to demand it? When are you actually going to swap money for it. So now let's kind of start applying this to pharmacy. So what about pharmacist services? Now I said pharmacist, not pharmacy. So when when do patients need a pharmacist? When do patients want a pharmacist? And when is there actually demand for a pharmacist? So our first case, a patient brings a prescription to the pharmacy to be filled. And again, we're talking about the United States. Um, so in this case, in order for the patient to walk away, they've, they've got a drug that needs to be filled. Or that, well, I don't want to give it away, but they've got a, a prescription that needs to be filled. Do they need a pharmacist to ensure that that prescription's filled in the United States? And based on um, laws and regulations, you know, a pharmacist is required for that pharmacy to be open and operating so they need a pharmacist on staff. If the pharmacist leaves, the pharmacy can't get to shut down its gates and you can't get the prescription. So in that case, case a pharmacist dispensing uh, would be a need. Now what if we switch to a patient who has a question about an over-the-counter pain medication? In this case, is a pharmacist needed are wanted in terms of um, helping the patient out. So you think about, you know, they have a question they uh, they need that they need to have answered. So are there any other options? Is there, you know, a legal requirement that patients must only ask pharmacists for uh, advice on over-the-counter pain medications? I mean, a patient could use the internet, ask a nurse, ask a doctor, ask their neighbor. Um, now maybe they want a pharmacist, so would this be an example of a want? So maybe they want to have a pharmacist work with them on this because the pharmacist is a medication expert. So you know that sounds like a, a definitely a good want. So you know my question to you is how do how do we transfer that want into a demand where a customer is willing and able to pay for that expertise or that advice? So we talk about marketing, we look at the four P's, product, place, price, and promotion. The product is essentially just the good or service provided, so whether it's prescriptions, MTMs, vaccinations, these are the things that meets the customer's needs, wants, and demands. The place refers to the availability and accessibility of the product or service. So this could be like your product placement, maybe a retail counter or a mail order service. The price refers to charging appropriately for a product or service. Now this can get extremely complex. Sometimes we do like a cost-based pricing, you know, you figure out what your costs are and and then you develop some type of markup. But really what about the prices of alternatives? Regardless of what your costs are, um, if you're if you're trying to make a profit and you produce something at an extremely low cost and everything else around you is priced um, really high are you better off pricing really low based on your cost or would you be better off pricing closer to what the market price is and another co component which uh, I won't get extreme you know get too into depth but what's the elasticity of demand for the product or service and for any of you guys who remember your econ 101 or you know whatever you had in undergrad you may remember some stuff around price elasticity so the elasticity refers to the change in the and the demand that patients have based on the change in price so if your price increases by 20 percent a uh, a perfectly, um, I guess, a a, um, a a product that is um, that has a um, 
a one to one elasticity or a, a ba the baseline of a elasticity of one would be uh, a twenty percent increase in price would result in a twenty percent decrease in demand so you would imagine elasticity would be uh, uh, an inverse relationship or a um, a negative relationship so what about when the price increases by fifty percent but the demand changes only five percent so that would refer to uh, an inelastic demand so the basically the de the demand doesn't change a whole lot regardless about the price whereas if you have a product that you change the price only ten percent and the demand drops seventy percent this would be uh, a, an, el an elastic demand and uh, or we would call that you know the uh, that price sensitive or sensitive to the price so think about pharmacist services you know if you need a pain medication you just broken your arm and you're at the pharmacy and um, you know the the elasticity of demand may be very inelastic you might pay just about anything to get that pain medicine but what about your you know a refill of a cholesterol medication if the price changes on that dramatically could that impact your demand for that product so promotion is all about the strategies used to increase awareness so are you using flyers or radio TV commercials maybe billboard sides or holding special events clinics um, health fairs so why don't we run through the four P's with an example using an MTM service or medication therapy management service at a retail pharmacy so our product is a, is the MTM program it's going to be located physically at the pharmacy maybe we have a separate patient counseling room uh, maybe we also provide telephonic MTMs the price will set at say fifty dollars per half hour session for a comprehensive review and then we'll also include a targeted fifteen minute review so half the time and we'll charge half the price for maybe a diabetes focus and we'll create some signs and do some direct mail campaigns to current customers so this may be one potential strategy for MTM and I'm not saying that this would be successful or or not and you have to think about um, you know would patients be willing to spend fifty dollars uh, to have an expert sit with them for half an hour over their medications um, we we'll get into market segmenting and and things will you know you can talk about are there groups of people that may actually be willing to pay that so these subgroups of individuals uh, are, are ways that we can kind of divide up our markets and think about you know from geographic location uh, demogra uh, demographics to attitudes and behaviors um, the niche market is really kind of even going further down into a market segment in a more specialized case so maybe diabetes specific patients or heart failure or HIV patients Here's some examples of, of segments and market niche, niches for a, a pharmacy practice. And this comes out of the Rosenthal uh, Reed Kane chapter in our uh, Chisholm Burns book. So maybe the characteristic is uh, age that we're looking at. And we segment our market uh, into young and old or pediatric and geriatric. And within our market segments, we have these, sep these individual niches. So in the pediatric um, group, we'll, um, we'll maybe target asthma or ADD whereas in the geriatric group maybe we're looking at Alzheimer's or hypertension type 2 diabetes so how do market characteristics affect marketing strategy anyone remember this uh, famous clown versus a life alert ad so let's take a look at these two images so what is the image of a of the of the clown represent so this is this um, Mar uh, McDonald's marketing campaign and and I guess this fun friendly Ronald McDonald clown was used to advertise directly to kids by getting uh, kids interested in and in going to McDonald's uh, guess what they were gonna <laughs> demand to go to McDonald's and bring their parents along with them so the whole family goes to McDonald's whereas life alert um, you can see the picture on the ad looks like uh, that market segment is for older adults maybe uh, that have have trouble um, you know moving and getting around now would a 
image of a clown falling down be successful to life alert? And no, that's likely not going to work because in the case they're not really marketing to children. So, um, so you know, identifying your 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 age characteristic is important. So we talk about branding. This is referring to a name, term, design, or symbol, or maybe any other feature that identifies a seller's good or service as distinct from those other sellers. So this comes from the American Marketing Association. So what are some brands that you guys may you know that you guys have seen or um, you know would would tell you something about the company? If you remember this um, Walgreens slogan, if you will, or this logo. So you know what is this? tell you about the Walgreens brand you know at the corner of happy and healthy so they're um, they're going after or trying to uh, market their brand to, to a healthy lifestyle or, or you know I guess equating happy and healthy together so um, you know they're also the red and whites very particular for Walgreens it's something that they've had for many years one of the most famous brands in the entire world coca-cola um, you know this this red symbol this uh, has stood the test of time and I think arguably I think is uh, um, one of the more valuable assets uh, intangible assets that the company holds there are also some famous athletes what about Nike Michael Jordan's uh, jump man uh, you know <laughs> Drake wrote a song about it um, it's probably one of the most successful uh, brands uh, anyone recognize this symbol the TW for Tiger Woods. This was a famous marketing campaign uh, that launched Nike's whole golf line, golf apparel. They built golf clubs, uh, but a lot of Tiger Woods branded stuff. Uh, and then we have the RF. Anyone know that? For those tennis fans out there, that's the Roger Federer brand. So uh, the ten Nike tennis lines uh, that may have the RF, definitely for the Fed fans. So when you're building a brand, you have to think about how do you differentiate your services from the competition? What image do you want your customers to associate with your service? And when customers see your logo attached to a service, you know, what are they going to expect? So, you know, thinking about, um, you know, if you're, if you're a healthcare company, a lot of times you'll see, again, kind of like what Walgreens did with happy, healthy um, types of terms, maybe, um, you know, maybe maybe you want to see some type of um, uh, you know someone that's that's sick but getting better. You know, I don't know someone in a cask that's smiling. I guess I I don't know. Like how how are you building out your brand? A lot of times, the pharmacy we always see the RX. The RX symbol is probably the most common um, symbol. You know, use that with the mortar and pestle that's uh, um, attached to a pharmacy. So do you want a brand based off of fast and friendly service? You know, is that is that the way you want to differentiate yourself? Um, I'm trying to think of some examples. Oh, uh, Jimmy John's. Does anyone ever eat sandwiches from Jimmy John's? They they marketed themselves on like getting a sandwich delivered to you like extremely fast. Maybe you want to be known as like the company with the most knowledgeable pharmacist. So maybe you you brand your your team to be experts and um, you know maybe you have your pharmacists do additional training and board uh, board certifications and um, I don't know like how, you know what's what's the thought there what about low cost can anyone think of a company right now that is all about low cost um, for the longest time Walmart was always you know the the company that would come to mind with low cost like they would produce uh, these you know they had these big stores you could get Anything you wanted seemed like under a couple of bucks, but you could never leave Walmart without spending a hundred dollars. I mean, you know, it's just by the time you get through there, you bought so many things, and um, and so they're, you know, they were definitely a low cost brand. Is that what you know you want your pharmacy to be? What about accessibility? Maybe convenience of availability, being there for your customer, being available twenty four seven. You know, is that something you want to think about? Maybe even have a private label. Uh, this is something that a lot of independent pharmacies have gone to. They've um, maybe worked with a, uh, a a private label company that allow them to create a line of, you know, acetaminophen, ibuprofen tablets or whatever that have their 
private label brand on it. Uh, I used to work for the Kroger company, so we we would have our you know our brand name products, and then right next to it we'd have our Kroger brand, if you will, and it had a little Kroger label on it, and and it would always be offered a couple dollars less than the than the brand. So what's the value of branding? Well. It, Ideally, it's going to build loyalty, so customers, uh, you know, get more comfortable buying your products that are associated with the brand, and and again, it it helps that differentiation. So, um, you know, if your if your customers um, get used to a brand, they know what to expect. Uh, I guess another you know good example may be Starbucks. I um I've become an addict to Starbucks, and and I know wherever I go uh, across the country, if I walk into a Starbucks, I'm, you know, I'm going to get my iced coffee flavored exactly the way I want it, and and it's you know, the way that they've they've um, created their franchise is it's all about like like a standardized way that they do things, you know, and that's just a something I've come to expect. So you know, brand does create like this. Um, uh, it does create a customer loyalty. I'll go out of my way to get to a Starbucks, and I'll, I'll go buy four different coffee shops to find a Starbucks. So let's, you know, kind of re recap everything. Marketing can can be informational or competitive. It's focusing on our needs, wants, and demands, and, and really on those wants. You know, how do we shift wants from uh, into demands? Um, the four P's of marketing we, we talked about are product, place, price, and promotion. Um, so hopefully, uh, by using the four P's, you can help develop a, a good strategy for your for your company. We went, we talked about segmentation and how we can break markets down into groups, uh, and even further market niches that are specific market segments that uh, maybe have specialized needs, wants, and demands. And then we use branding to build loyalty and uh, differentiate your product or service from the competition. All right, so let's do a little case study. So Joe's is a regional community pharmacy chain located in the south. Joe's is known for speedy service with the average prescription wait times often below seven minutes. All of Joe's pharmacy locations are in the middle are in middle to high income suburbs. All right, given this background, what would be your strategy uh, to developing marketing promotion tools for Joe's if you were brought in as a consultant? So think about that for a bit. Think about the location of the pharmacy or where, where you know, how, you know, it's a regional chain, so maybe there's five, ten different pharmacies. It looks like all the locations are in uh, more affluent areas. So what does that mean? What, you know, what does that mean about the customer, um, the, the market, the mix? Um, Looks like they're you know they're known for some speedy service and we have a you know a pretty good wait time and that and you know again looking at the market is a seven minute wait time in this region is that good I mean is seven minutes is that speedy and I, I I'm guessing it would be I'm, um, so yeah I don't know so think about think about that this will be something we will bring up and uh, if we um, have a chance to um, uh, talk about it in class when we have our have our session. Uh, we'll have an active learning session on developing new services, so we'll uh, we can talk about it there. But think about this example and maybe come up with the four P's or what what would be a strategy of uh, of marketing prescription services at Joe's if you were the uh, marketing consultant. And as always, if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to shoot me an email or uh, contact yeah. me on Twitter. Jumpin', 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 them boys up to something. They just spent like two or three weeks out the country. Them boys up to something, they just not just bluffin'. You don't have to call, I hear my dance like Usher. Ooh.